I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, is brought to you this week by Malware Bytes Anti Malware. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! You say, Dr. Bill, you're wearing a cabby hat. Indeed. <laughs> it's one of the Christmas presents that I got that I asked Santa Claus for. <laughs> yeah. You know... I wear cowboy ha uh, cowboy, <laughs> not cowboy, cabby. I wear cabby hats now. Cabby hats are cool. <laughs> Indeed. And, um, you know I'm, I'm a good buddy with the doctor, right? Now, I haven't seen him since his last regeneration, but I do have a picture of him over here. He and I hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, anyway... <laughs> He can wear fezzes, I wear cabby hats. It harkens back to my heritage of being Irish. You know, Bailey, Irish. And I'm not from Ireland, Ireland. <laughs> I'm actually from Thomasville, North Carolina. <laughs> but my, my folks from way back, back in the annals of history, they, they were from Ireland. And a lot of other places, including a full-blooded Cherokee great-great-grandmother. So, I'm down with all the Native Americans out there as well. I got a little bit of everything. I'm pretty much a mutt. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yes. So, there you go. So, this is fun doing the show with another hat. Last week, it was the Santa Claus hat, which I still have here. They still have the Santa Claus hat. You know, I just hadn't got it put up yet. But it's after Christmas. So, I'm going more regular with... I guess it's regular with my cabby hat. It's now my persona. Whatever. I figure the Game Master can wear a fedora. My son, the Game Master. Yes, and... He looks very hipstery in it, but, you know. Anyway, so, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com, if it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? <laughs> yes, and we are, are also, are, are, we are, I've been watching piratey things with the Game Master, by the way. He's been playing a game, uh, Assassin's Creed 4. Four. Yes. On his new PlayStation 4. Four. There's <laughs> a lot of fours. So, that's been fun. It's kind of bloody. But fun. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, oh, yes, we are. Yeah, you thought I got distracted. We are <laughs> also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. There you go. So I got my microphone kind of kind of better. The arm is a little more you know, it's sticking up in the way. Exactly. So it's better. And a little more tweaking. Um. So we got stuff to talk about on the show this week. I got lots of after Christmassy stuff. You know, I got the hat. I got a Chromebook. I got other things. Lots of other things, including a tablet. To, not a tablet like you write on tablet, but a tablet that you draw on, on your computer. It's like a graphics tablet thing. It's really cool. Plus, lots of candy and chewing gum and things that are yummy. Yeah. have to get right back on the dieting thing right after the holidays. You know what I mean? Whoa. 
I mean, you know, I've lost 145 pounds officially. I may have gained a little back <laughs> during the holidays, but I'll jump right back on it as soon as I get past these days of celebration. You know, I believe in celebration, including when it comes to the eating part. Yes. Okay, so let's look at what we're going to talk about this week from the blog. The blog, of course, is Dr. Bill, D R B I L L dot TV. TV, of course, because it's a video netcast, as you see before you, in glorious HD. Yes. Um, but we do have stuff. For instance, Ubuntu phones are coming soon, you know? Ubuntu Canonical. I found that if I say it really fast and get past it, maybe nobody will notice that I'm not pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. They tried a Kickstarter project, actually I think it was Indiegogo project, whatever, crowdfunding to create an Ubuntu phone that was glorious. I definitely was excited. I contributed toward it. But it didn't go. You know, it didn't make it. And uh, they had promised, you know, that they would give all the money back if it didn't make it. Kind of wish they'd have kept the money and done it anyway. <laughs> Even if they didn't make their official goal. So, they pretty much did, in a way. They can keep the money. They sent it back, but they're going to go ahead and do the Ubuntu phone. So, how are they doing that? They say here in The Verge, Canonical's Ubuntu Touch operating system will be headed to mobile phones made by mystery, mystery, Hardware manufacturer, the company said today, as I posted this, they had said it previously. Speaking to CNET, founder Mark Shuttleworth said Canonicals, see I keep stumbling over that, made an agreement with an unnamed smartphone maker to get the operating system on high-end phones sometime next year. If this sounds like a broken record, you're not mistaken. Back in January, that company... Promised devices running on a standalone version of Ubuntu by early next year, a goal that went off track when crowdfunding for the company's Edge smartphone hardware missed badly. The operating system that would have powered it lives on, though, and Shuttleworth now says the company is currently in high-level discussions with at least four, there it is again, four additional major phone makers to get Ubuntu Touch devices out the door. Cool. There's something weird going on here with the fours. You know what I mean? Yes. Whoa! Okay, that was an early Geek Software of the Week. Drum roll. But okay, Fred, I'm down with that. Geek Software of the Week this week is unusual. Why, you might ask, is it unusual? Because it's an Android app. Now, I know those of you out there that have iPads, iPhones, and other iDevices are going, Aww. <laughs> well, tough. <laughs> Android is the most popular smartphone there is, Android phones. So just deal with it. <laughs> so anyway, if you do you do you want to stream content a la Chromecast from your Android tablet phone etc to most DNLA supported devices he asked this includes the Roku the Apple TV etc well now you can <laughs> Koshik Duta which I'm sure I'm pronouncing mispronouncing from Clockwork Mod, gotta love that, has posted a new app in the Google Play Store. Here's a video on how it works, and then I have a video right there on the old blog, the drbill.tv blog, on how it works. So basically, all cast for Android is our geek software of the week this week. And as it said there, you can cast video, and other things to music and so forth to your 
giant screen television if you have it hooked up to a DNLA supported device or if your television already has DNLA embedded in it like a smart TV. How cool is that? So I like that. Now, onward! This is a Facebook conversation about Chromebooks. You say, Dr. Bell, how did you have a Facebook conversation about Chromebooks? Well, I'll tell you. What I did is this. After Christmas and I got my Chromebook, I was so excited. I was like a little bitty kid. Yeah, yeah I know, Fred, you're right. I kind of am a little bitty kid, just in a grown-up body with gray hair. Oh, well. Anyway, so I immediately went to Facebook and went, dude, I got a Chromebook. And I was excited. And so my Facebook friend, my nameless Facebook friend, who, by the way, is not Jim Bob, obviously. Jim Bob is my heretofore nameless friend at work that is anti-Google. He thinks Google is the devil. I have embedded myself even further into the Googleverse. <laughs> so, Jim Bob, not his real name, is miffed, I'm sure. Oh well. Anyway, so not that Facebook friend, <laughs> okay? But another Facebook friend said, Hi, Doc. Last week I was looking at the Samsung Chromebook, also Acer, and I'm still hesitating a little on it. And now here you show up all excited about it. Tell me more. I understand you've got the Acer. Do you like it better than the Samsung? Is this the one that's around 250 bucks? I'm asking this because I saw one online thinking it was Samsung for around 800 bucks. Give me your best thoughts. So here's what I said. This one, the one that I have, that I got for Christmas, this one is the Acer C720P, which I have here on the screen. Um, okay, the C720P, yes, has a touch screen. Touch screen. Before this, to get a Chromebook with a touch screen was around $1,400. What? This one is high-end, fast, and does have a touch screen. But it's only $299 on Amazon. Yes, much better. Um, it's really nice if you live in the Google sphere, as do I. I also have a Google Nexus 10 tablet and a Google Chromecast on my TV, so I'm pretty much into Google tech. I'm working towards seeing if I can do all my computing for a week. I'm going to start small, you know what I mean? For a week, just off the Chromebook. Quite a challenge for me. As much computer-related work as I do, it's fast, and it comes up nearly instantly. Facebook friend replies back. Thank you. Appreciate the info. One more question, if you don't mind. Lately, I've seen some laptops with touch screens. Honestly, I don't like it. To me, it doesn't make any sense, but I could be wrong. Educate me on this. And so here I went full bore philosophical on him. <laughs> I said this, I know what you mean. They, in quotes, the designers of such things are pushing us to a touchscreen world because the prevailing theory is that the future of computing is tablet-like devices. According to these folks, we're now in a post-PC era, once again in quotes. Google that phrase for more discussion. So basically I'm telling him if he wants to go to Google and type in the phrase post PC era he can get more information on what they in quotes <laughs> are saying we are in now the post PC era. I go on to say I believe that cloud PC technology like the Chromebook can be a viable platform but I also wanted to have the option to move toward the touchscreen feature that they are predicting Hedge my bet, so to speak. Also, if the Chrome OS experience is not as viable as I think it will be, I can install Ubuntu Linux on it, because it has touch capabilities, 
and have a nice touchscreen Linux laptop. That's the plan, anyway. So, I then further say, oh, I also forgot to mention that the 720 without the P is 50 bucks less and does not have a touchscreen. So basically, the 50 bucks is for the touchscreen. Okay? So then he goes on to say, thanks for the insight. This reminds me of some close to 30 years ago and my first cell phone 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 uh, from the company I was working for. It was one of those huge ones that you could use in the car and carry all those pounds. The whole thing was basically like the battery. In those days, people started talking about what we have today. They sounded like it was a Dick Tracy thing. It really made no sense at all. A few years back, I'd say some 15 years, I heard people talking about, in the future, computers would have no hard drive. Everything would work from a big computer installed somewhere out there. Again, it made no sense at all. At all. And look where we are now. Which is pretty much what the Chromebook's all about. It has a solid state drive, not a regular hard drive. And it boots nearly instantly. And it works from the cloud. So, interesting discussion there. So here's what I thought I'd do. I thought I would do a demo and show you why the Chromebook is awesome. So let's do that. This isn't an unboxing, by the way. I kind of have decided that unboxings are silly. I mean, it's a box. Whoopee. <laughs> Take it out of the box and play with it. Then show it on the video. That's what I say. So here's our Chromebook example test demo now okay so here's our google chromebook demo this is the acer c720p the p of course mean, mainly just designates that it's the touch screen model so i'm going to go ahead and open it up here it's going to be a little bit hard to see but the one thing you will notice is that when I opened it, it instantly came on. I mean, I'm not talking several seconds. I'm talking about instantly. Now, to be fair, I had it on. Okay, so, I mean, it's not exactly a fair comparison. But uh, I'm going to go ahead now and raise this up just a tad so you can see the screen just a bit better. Even though my background won't be quite as nice and neat. I've never been known for having a super professional... <laughs> presentation anyway as you well know so there you go so there's there's the old Google screen now from there I can go over and log in for instance to my email which of course I use LastPass for oh my LastPass password is not entered so it won't go in automatically well that's okay we won't do that instead we'll go to the good old Dr. Bill site. Now, of course, this is prior to the show that I'm working on right now, so this is uh, currently featuring last week's show, but that's okay. So uh, for a full official demo, I'm going to go down here and actually shut down the Chromebook. Okay, so sign out and I'm going to hit the old button here to turn it off. So it is now turned off. It is off. Okay. So I'm pressing the button now. And it shows the Chrome screen. And there it is. Ready to log in. I mean, we're talking less than seven seconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and type the old super, super duper secret password which will log me back in and take me back to good old Google and then go to the Dr. Bill site once again. Now, it's really, really fast. Okay? Now, my internet connection has been just a little bit wonky lately. I'm working on that. I think I may have to reboot my router once again, so I'm going to refresh that. And see if I can, there we go, get the Dr. Bill site back up in all of its glory. But at any rate, um, as you can see, this is still last week's show because, you know, I haven't officially posted the new show yet, obviously. See if I can get rid of some shiny there. Eh, not too bad. So anyway, the big thing about this 
as you saw how fast it comes up, how quick it is. Like I said, I've been having a little bit of a problem with my internet connection since the Christmas holidays started. I'm going to have to tweak my router a bit, I imagine. But uh, pretty cool stuff. I'm really liking it. It's fast. It has kind of a chiclety keyboard, but it really feels good. The, the keyboard action is actually pretty nice. And as you can see, the specs here, I'm going to zoom in here on the specs. You know, all the various things, including the fact that you get 100 gig free of Google Drive space. That's pretty cool. So, like I said, I'm kind of liking it. And you, like I say, you can close it up. And uh, let me turn it around so you can see the, the logo there. Chrome, Acer, you know. And in terms of of what it's got here you've got your uh, USB 3.0 the little blue line there indicates it's USB 3.0 it's got the headphone jack it's got the power jack and it's got HDMI full-size HDMI connection so I can connect this to my HDMI TV connection and then over here I've got uh, an SD card slot a USB 2.0 slot and the Kensington lock thingy there uh, so very thin it's kind of hard to see but if you can see the size of my fingers compared to it it's uh, kind of thin and light you know it's really really nice so I'm gonna adjust this back down here and put it out here for a little better display there we go so really I tell you I'm liking it a lot so those of you that are Chromebook naysayers Dude, I'd like to see your laptop boot as fast as this. <laughs> okay, so what did you think of that? Pretty cool stuff, huh? So it's going to be fun to play with that further and do real computery stuff with it. I got excited about that. Anyway, next item, Amazon sales during the Christmas season sets records. Yes. Amazon is exiting the 2013 holiday season with tens of millions of Amazon Prime members. According to a statement this morning from CEO Jeff Bezos, signaling that the company has reached at least 20 million members for its $79 a year subscription program. Whoa. Overall, Amazon says the 2013 holiday season was its best ever, with more than 36.8 million items dude ordered on cyber monday alone 36.8 million just on cyber monday wow so anyway it is a surprise that the holiday season set a new record isn't a surprise given the steady growth in e-commerce sales worldwide the company didn't disclose sales figures so the full impact won't be apparent until amazon reports fourth quarter earnings Wow. Pretty cool stuff. Now, of that, of those sales, quite a few of them were Chromebooks. Next item here. It's been a very Chromebook Christmas this year, is what I posted. I actually posted it this morning. As you know, I love my Chromebook that I got for Christmas, which I showed you earlier. I've been playing with it, and it's awesome. But it does my heart even more good to know that it's chafing Microsoft. <laughs> you gotta love that. So, it says here from Computer World, Chromebooks have had a very good year, according to retailer Amazon.com, an industry analyst. And that's bad news for Microsoft, which is good news for me. <laughs> yes. The pared-down laptops powered by Google's browser-based Chrome OS have surfaced, surfaced this year. I seem to be having a problem with the old tongue today. It surfaced this year as a threat to Wintel, the Microsoft Intel ugly archy. Ugly archy, maybe. Anyway, that has dominated the personal computer space for decades with Windows machines. On Thursday, Amazon.com called out a pair of Chromebooks, the one from Samsung and the other from Acer, as two of the three best-selling notebooks during the U.S. holiday season. The third 
Asus's Transformer Book, a Windows 8 1, 2 in 1 device that transforms from a 10.1 inch tablet to a keyboard equipped laptop. So, Chromebooks are the big winners in the holiday selling spree. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsor. Yes, our sponsor this week is Malware Bytes. Malware Bytes Anti Malware. As the ad says on the site here, nothing bites more than malware. <laughs> yes. Malware Bytes protects your PC for free. You can actually download Malware Bytes for free, or you can pay for the full blown pro version and get extra features and automatic scanning on a timer and a bunch of other stuff. But here's what I want you to do, just like the lower third here says. Go to drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv, as it says there. Do that. And when you go there, then click through the ad to free download the malware bytes, anti-malware, and to subscribe to the pro version. It will help the doctor immensely. Yes. By the way, the sound you hear is my wife making a cake. Like I said, Christmas is fun. <laughs> We've been eating lots of sugary things, and I like it. I'm looking forward to the cake. Yes. Anyway, last item. Facebook is dead to teens. Aw. I guess I should take my hat off and put it over my heart and say, aw. Not really. Anyway, Facebook is dead to teens, it says. Now, I personally have noticed that there are fewer younger folk on Facebook these days that I know of. The Game Master avoids Facebook like it, like it's the plague. He says, no way. Of course, the Game Master just sits around and plays games all the time. He doesn't deal with humans unless they're online. What are you going to do? I mean, if you're, you're online, if you're on Facebook, but he's just not into Facebook. But apparently neither are a lot of other younger folks. So it's up to us old geezers that are going to go out there and mess with Facebook these days. <laughs> yes. Somehow the cabbie hat fits the geezer persona. I like it. <laughs> cabbie. Cabbie, cabbie, cabbie. Not cowboy. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, The Guardian, that venerable news publication from the UK, says Facebook is dead and buried to older teenagers, an extensive European study has found, as the key age group moves on to Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, WhatsApp, and Snapchat. Twitter, I'm on Twitter myself. And I had a geek culture music thing many years ago. You're no one if you're not on Twitter. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you listen closely. You're no one if you're not on Twitter. And if you aren't there already, yes. you missed it. Yeah, you I know it's, been it's odd. Retweeted and anyway, you might as well not have existed. A blast from the past. You might as well not anyway, have existed. Anyway, Facebook is not just on the slide, it's basically dead and buried, wrote Daniel Miller, lead anthropologist on the research team, who is a professor of material culture at the University College in London. Mostly they feel embarrassed <laughs> to even be associated with it. Whoa. Where once parents worried about their children joining Facebook, the children now say it's their family that insists they stay there to post things about their lives. Teens do not care that alternative services are less functional and sophisticated. They also are unconcerned about how information about them is being used commercially as part of surveillance practice by security services, the research found. What appears to be the most seminal moment any young person's decision to leave Facebook was surely that dreaded day that your mom, remember this is English here, your mom sends you a friend request, <laughs> wrote Miller. I mean, come on, folks. 
You know, if, you're, if your mother is cool and she's on Facebook, why not friend her? <laughs> anyway. So, now see my mom, who has moved on to heaven. You know, but she was not into computers. She absolutely did not understand computers. She also didn't understand my fascination with computers. She kept hoping I'd eventually get a real job. <laughs> you know? Oh, well. No, actually, she was quite proud of the fact that I knew about computers. She just couldn't fathom what they were all about. It was just a box that flashed and beeped. To which I say, yes. <laughs> That's pretty much right. So anyway. So kids are leaving Facebook. And, uh... It goes on to say that as a part of their study, they found that 40% of users had never changed their privacy settings. And 80% said they were not concerned and did not care if their personal data was available and accessed. What's wrong with you people? Are you crazy? You need to go in and set your privacy settings so that you're anonymous. Well, nearly. I mean, there's certain things about me I don't care if you know, like my name. If you don't know my name by now, you haven't been paying attention. I mean, Dr. Bill Bailey flashes across the screen, and it says drbill.tv. And if you Google Dr. Bill Bailey, it comes up on a whole full page of googly information. But it's all stuff that I don't mind you knowing. You don't know lots of other things about me. <laughs> Now, the NSA does, of course. What are you going to do there? <sighs> but I'm friends with the NSA. Isn't that right, guys? Whew. Can't be too careful. Anyway, hope you're having a good week this week. Enjoying your Christmas toys. Getting ready for the new year. Getting ready to go back to work. Dude. In the meantime, though, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my time off. Ha ha ha. Part of the time I've spent doing my time off is videoing. So you know how that's been going. <laughs> so remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.